you look at the leaf structure on this versus the leaf structure over that and the, color, the flower difference in this one. So back 20 some years ago when I started in this business, they used to talk about Western genetics and Eastern genetics. You know, these purple flowers to the Western, the more offensive varieties, right? And then the white flower like you have across the lane over here, that was more of the Eastern genetics, more the defensive, right? Put that in more challenging soils, the waterlogged soil type, type situations. So um, you also notice the difference in leaf structure. And this has been out for a little while, but look at that linear leaf. And then if you look at that leaf structure just across the lane, it's, it's got a little bit wider of a leaf, right? So, you know, what's fun for leaves is, I always ask this question, Corey, you know, what are, what are, what are leaves? Solar panels. Solar panels. What else are leaves? Think about fuel tanks. I like to ask farmers, you're a farmer. I like to ask farmers, do you just have a 100 gallon diesel fuel tank on your farm? Unfortunately not. Why not, Corey? that's not going to hold crap <laughs> that's right it's not going to hold crap because when it's go time when it's time to spray or when it's time to farm or time to time to go shell shell corn or cut beans you got to have fuel on the farm right mm -hmm. these are fuel tanks so when it's go time to go into reproduction it's got to have the storage there built up and ready to roll right and transfer into that output that yield right into that seed so but you know it's funny and just what, what you said in the genetics of the soybeans how they've just changed in the past five to seven years yeah Remember, we was always after leaves as big as our hands yep. that we could get. We don't want that. Well, what did we learn? It's too big. It's, it's shading out. You can't get any sun, sunlight through the canopy mm -hmm. for energy for the bottom leaves. So the what do breeders do? Leaf. That's why that's more of an offensive bean right there. They went to that. So that way all your leaves are smaller, more elongated than wide, but that way sunlight can penetrate. As you can just see here, standing here looking down the rows, there's sunlight going all the way to the ground. Now, yes, we're on 20 inch rows, but still, I mean, that's what we're looking at when we choose a bean. Yep. You know, that's the kind of structure that we want. And we, yeah, we pull a lot from the Western because yep. we want the offensive. That's right. You're right, East Coast is more off offensive or defensive, defensive beans. Yeah. You know, they're made for that rough and tough acre that's gonna survive everything. and. Mm -hmm. But give me the give me the all star bean and we'll do our job to keep it stress free. Right on. What are the populations here? It's about 115. It's variable rated, so it's going to be anywhere from 105 to 135. But like today, it's a beautiful day to spray. I mean, I think it was 86 when I was coming down the laneway. We probably have three to five mile per hour winds right now. Um, sun's out you can tell so another thing what we're looking at and he, that's why I trust Matt because he understands what to look for is what we call the beans leaf flipping huh. so if you start seeing white out here that is because these bean leaves has flipped so see just a color difference how dark green that side is how light that is if you start seeing that might as well quit spraying that plant is not going to take up any nutrients at all. It has gone into full defensive mode, saying I'm underneath heat stress, I'm stressed out, leave me alone. And that's what you got to do. A lot of times farmers will just focus on acres per day. Yeah. And these beans will be flipped and they're going to spray and then they'll call you at harvest and say, hey, your product didn't work. Mm -hmm. We see no yield, yield advantage at all. Well, no crap, you just wasted it. I mean, you might as well just go out and dump it in a gravel driveway that plant cannot take it up. So it is crucial when you're spraying, especially in July and August, to pay attention to that plant, to know when to shut it down. Right now, I've got them running starting right at six o'clock. That's the coolest. That's the best time to spray. As soon as we hit 88, 90 degrees, he's shutting down. And it's just what it's we gotta call. do, yeah. But I don't wanna waste all this money that I have in this load for a plant not to take it up it's that's pointless mm -hmm. right i mean spend all this money on stuff to help the yield and then the plant denies it mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that cuticle you know if you we all know this that there's a waxy cuticle on the top right it's got that nice dark dark side and this is what photosynthesizes where it take the nutrients in when that thing flips over if it sits over for too long that's where you see the sun's called at mm -hmm. right that burning sun like we're having right now if it flips up another Eight ten degrees, she's going to start having some sun scald, which will eventually show through on this side, which it kills looks like your a rust solar ring. panel. Right, looks like rust. Yeah, right, you think it's like disease, ring, yep. and it's not. It's sunburn.
That's what it is. Yeah, we call them sunspots on beans. That's yep. not never a good sign because that means it's been stressed for too long. Too long mm -hmm. that it's been able to flip and get it. But yeah, you're right. I mean, as soon as you just call her that, I mean, what do you think we're spraying fungicides on these? That's right. To keep them healthy and green. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want frog eye on here. You, know, you get frog eye on this, is that plant going to be working anymore? It's like broken cells on a solar panel. Yeah, it's like taking a solar panel and covering it up. Yep. You're not going to have much electric for long. You'll be Amish. Ohio, we have very high humidity. Our dew points are always high. Um, if we came out here and walked this bean field this morning, would we be this dry right now? No. No, we'd be soaking wet because of the dew. So I like spraying after a dew, not into a dew. So the dew can be on it and I can apply it's just a little bit of extra kit carrier because it's going to dry with it. But if I'm spraying at night and we have a heavy dew setting in, it's just like you spraying Roundup at home and then taking a garden hose right behind it and spraying it off. Is that going to be effective? No. So you have to understand your climate. Uh, you go out west, they don't know what morning dews are. You know, it's just a dry air, dry heat. So would that be the time to spray? Absolutely, spray at night. You don't have to worry about that. So it's all depending on your climate and where you're at and how heavy of, of a dew you're at. I mean, oh, a lot of people that's never been to Ohio, they don't think how hot and sticky Ohio is. But you know, we, we constantly have fogs in the morning. We constantly have a bunch of dew every single morning, which helps with the uh, uh, elastic of the plant because we do get some moisture on it even when we're not getting rain, you know, compared to that dry, no moisture, high winds all the time, and they just beat and tatter these leaves on corn and, and soybeans. So you gotta take the good with the bad, but as far as spraying into a heavy dew at night, I would caution that. So another thing too that's different here, so this was worked with the Bednar, which is a little bit more, more aggressive. And that was worked with our Terramax, which is less aggressive in the fall. Vertical and, tilt jewels? Yeah, and we've seen a huge difference all season really? long between these two fields. So does this go like two and a half inches? And that's like an inch and a half? Well, yeah, it, it flips the root ball out. So that it can break down all winter? Yeah. Blow into your neighbor's dishes? No, okay. no, I mean, it buries it. It flips it and buries it, rips oh, it yeah. out, yeah. yeah. It flips it and buries it. Um, did a really nice job. I'd say it looks great. Yeah. This field looks awesome. Yeah. Now, can you see difference in on your monitor with singularity between the two tools? As far as we came back with emergence? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, singularity really didn't matter on the planner, but when we came back for the emergence, pogo stick yeah, test, that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, on emergence. Oh, heck mm -hmm. yeah. About every one of these beans came up. 75% of those came up. That's a big deal. Sounds like you got a tool for sale. Yeah. The same variety. I'm like, uh, because driving in, I'm like, man, there's something different about it. I just don't know what it's it nice is. Beans. I don't know what it is. It's now I do. Yeah. But you want to really think tillage would make that big of a difference. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. This dried out faster, you know, so it's better soil conditions when mm -hmm. we planted. So what's the depth difference then? Yeah. So now some problem fields will you chisel plow them and then run that tool across it then? In the no, spring? actually, we've sold all of our chisel plows. Really? We don't own one anymore, which I never thought I'd you see. You rip it all? Mm -hmm. Too much ripping? No. No? Uh -oh, we're, we're, we're trying to go to minimum to minimal till this route. So we're doing covers before long. Oh, we've tried covers. Um, some of our farms, like we go towards Xenia and that rolling ground, we still do cover crops. It benefits the pace. Mm -hmm. uh, the soil that you're looking out right here, it doesn't, it doesn't pay. pay. So what's your choice to use for covers? Which varieties, or like what's, what mix? Uh, it depends on what we're following. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if beans are coming up, mainly just doing like a cereal rye and some deep tillage radish. I, I really like the deep tillage radish because I'm a big believer whenever you can put more holes in that soil for air and water mm -hmm. and moisture, the better it is. So then if we're going in corn, you know, we're gonna use more of like, you know, your, your chick, peas, your winter peas, mm -hmm. your chickadees, things mm -hmm. like that. And deep tillage radishes again. Mm -hmm. So we've tried a bunch of different ways. I mean, we've done it with an airplane. We've done it with a drill. So you've done, done it in some standing corn then with the airplane yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
you know, it, it was a very hot button item probably seven, five years ago. Yeah. You know, cover crops gonna be the wave of the future. And we just learned that we can affect our organic matter faster with biologicals than we can through cover crops, especially on this dirt. Yeah. But everything has its place. Like I said, we go to Xenia and that light clay, CECs of four to six, you know, it needs cover crop. Mm -hmm. It has to have it. It pays. Yeah, different soil structure, yeah. different soil type. But you come here on this black dirt that I would compare to Illinois. Yeah. You're just not gonna see that big of a response. Yeah. I mean, you can tell we're pretty flat. That's truly managing your farms, Corey. Managing them, each, in, each one. Yeah, yep. You gotta break each farm down and treat it separate. Right. You, know, you gotta know what it likes and what it don't like. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying manage the manage it with biological, you're talking stock digester type products? Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you can, you just, so organic matter is just gonna be all that poop that we have broke down from that soil that's there. And we have always done, or you know, I want to give Dad credit. He has always done a great job in years of making sure the soil has been well taken care of with the nutrients. But how do we unlock the nutrients that's there? And that's what we've really been focusing on. We've taken farms from you know 1.4 organic matter all the way up to four organic matter, and that's not easy to do. But once you get that, it it's a lot more forgiving. Mm -hmm. Like you see this bean field here yep. with the heat and the yeah. And the rain stress that it's had, it still responded pretty darn good. Yeah. Well, that's not just because of one product we sprayed. That is years and years of management. Mm -hmm. We're trying to build that soil up to withhandle whatever Mother Nature will throw at it. And eventually, Mother Nature will win, but mm -hmm. we're at least going to give our crop the best shot. Right. You're absolutely right. It's years and years of management is what it is, mm -hmm. right? It's not always about what you do this year to impact this year. It's about what you do this year to impact years to come. We are going to have some really good fields, oh, yeah. and we're going to have some poor fields. But you know, this year I'll give Dad credit; he was more willing to step out of his comfort zone and try different things, just because of the prices. You know, when you're looking at you know our inputs and what we're going to sell these corn and beans for, you've got to get creative on where we're going to cut costs. You know, and tillage and fuel and labor is a huge one. You know, fields getting more expensive, labor's getting harder to find. Mm -hmm. Equipment's getting more expensive, so that's one of the easiest things for the chopping block. So if we can get the same yields, but do it with less equipment, less fuel, and less manpower, we're all for it. Absolutely. So we're trying it, and this is going to be a good test this year because it's at about every stress you can throw at it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to really figure out which right. way to hand out the best. Yeah. I'm excited to see what your results are at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, when, Corey, when we were driving down this lane, there was definitely a noticeable difference outside of the hybrid or the variety change here. You could definitely see a difference from one field to the other. And I'm just going to put my finger on it until you said where the tilt cover to use on it. Yep. So, sounds out like a sore thumb, buddy. Yeah. Okay, so some real quick. That's not the white of the leaves we're talking about. No. That's just wind yeah. blowing them and flipping them up. So if you see that, that's not from the heat. They're not flipping yet. That's just, they're on the outside row here, they're getting all the wind, they're just being blown upright. 